This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick. What's on tap for us tonight? How are you doing, first of all, before I even go that far? Is everything all right? Yes, it's, awesome. it's all good, John. Thanks Great. for asking. Great, cool. Shipments coming in, all that? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like Amazon has been really generous after their, like, buy two, get get one free sale. It's like, and there's, like, I've been able to, like, take lots of stuff on my off of my to read list like thanks to that though it's like there's also like now that that's done it's like well it's time to start like you know like going back to the guys at cheap graphic novels as far as like you know what's in stock and what can i order without having to wait like a month and a half in order to for it to actually arrive at my house all right and so what do you have for us tonight all right tonight comes to us courtesy of the right stuff like you know my trusty like you know like a mon- like a manga shippers and all. It's like and even if sometimes they take like like maybe like several weeks to ship. Like well then there's the times when like hey they'll, they'll get this they'll get the stuff out right away. And this is something that they actually managed to ship right on time. And that is the final volume of Silver Spoon by Hiromu Arakawa. Now Arakawa, you may recall, is the uh, manga who took the world by storm with her series Full Metal Alchemist. This is a uh, 27 volume, volume series about the adventures of um, Edward and Alphonse Elric. It's like like um, alchemists who could like change, it's like um, change whatever they could, what they could they get their hands on into like whatever where they could manage to the properties of equivalent exchange. And um, this is a series that like threw that 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 um, that throve on um, on um, moral ambiguity because even though it's like you know these are the these are the characters who like our protagonists, like we're the guys who are clearly in the right. They're obvious. They're like asked multiple times to do like um stuff that was like like really dubious in order to like in order to advance like in order to like um triumph over the bad guys and the bad guys who even had like you know their own questions like you know like what, what, like like you know this is what we need to do, but like is it like ultimately what like it works out for us in the end? It's like it was a great series and i did a podcast about that like several years ago and a couple of years back even like i talked um, with my buddy steve about um like about the start of silver spoon because this is a series i've been reading in um scan format like for a good long while um, before it actually got a proper english release interestingly enough um like despite coming from um it's like um viz some um, like visit one of Viz's um Japanese um like uh, counterparts um like I'm sure I'm sure Hukon. It's like um Silver Spoon was not actually published by Viz. And I'm just kinda of, and it all and it'll always like like um, make me wonder as to why. Because you know, like like regardless of what Silver Spoon is actually about, and I'll get to that in a second, you think like, okay, you, you slap a big from the creator of Full Metal Alchemist on this um manga and you think that's a license to print money. You know, it's like what did the full creator of Full Metal Alchemist do after she created Full Metal, full Metal Alchemist? She did Silver Spoon. It's like so you want to get in on that because that is what um, this is from the creator of Full Metal Alchemist. And the thing is, I was like for years, like it was not licensed by anyone, and it even got an like anime adaptation. Two like anime adaptations. I think like there's there are like, there are, like two. Two seasons, like thirteen and eleven episodes, and you think like, well, why, why did it not get, get um, get like an English, like an English licensed um like version from from Viz at least, you know, because it was coming from one of their um parent companies, and in fact, when um Silver Shoe was finally licensed, it did not um it was not licensed by Viz, it was licensed by Yen Press, the guy the, um, the good old guys who gave us. You know, quality series like Yo- like Yoshibato and Delicious in Dungeon and and of course um, Prison School, yeah. So, but um, once um like Silver Spoon like was licensed by Yen Press, I was I was there for it because you know it's like I bought I I, I had read the scanlations, so obviously I'm going to like um I'm going to want I read the scanlations, I like the scanlations. I want to um, show my support for this series, so I'm going to want to buy this series, like as far as like you know, like for as long as they're supporting it. And yeah, um, in fact, uh, Yen's um, licensing of the series turned out to work 
turned turned out to work pretty well for it because, well, um, Silver Spoon ran into some like uh, serialization problems like towards the end of its run because while um, Arakara was um, doing doing this, she was also doing um, the Heroic Legend of Arsland. In fact, she's still doing the Heroic Legend of Arsland for um, like um, for Kodansha, but in addition, like she apparently she had also had to. Um, put Silver Spoon on um, hiatus or like even delayed releases because she had been taking care of a uh, like a, a sick family member it's like like as well so and um it's like and well that was the that was the nominal reason she that was given for the series on um, like going on hiatus it's like it it's like it went it was like greatly delayed like for, like, for several years like to the point where like it did not finish Finish up serialization until last year. So, well, I'm kind of, well, I was kind of, well, I was kind of surprised and disappointed the series did not get licensed um, right away. Um, it turns out that, um, like, Yen Press waiting, like, like eventually getting the uh, the licensing when it did allowed um, Silver Spoon to be released like at a um, steady bi-monthly um, um, rate. Um, since um, like since March um, March of 2019, so that was so like I mean that kind of worked out. But as far as like what um, Silver Spoon is about, well, it's a story about one um, Hachiken Yugo Yugo Hachiken, who um, he's a he's a kid who, who like like who um, he's a average high, average like you know Japanese high school student, but um, he's but and he's kind of like um burnt burnt out about studying to the point where he realizes that you know like well it's like you know I just don't want to do this anymore this this it's like this like uh, constant grind like you know towards like you know studying above all else it's like I just want to get away far away from this as possible and so it's, and so while he's a uh, student in 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 Sapporo it's like um his his um, teacher te- tells him hey you know why don't you uh, here I've got this like uh, opening for like a agricultural high school out in out in Hokkaido, um, like, it, like, uh, like Azo, like um Azo Agricultural. It's so, like and um and Hachiken decides fine I'm just gonna go there, I'm just gonna go there I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm, and I'm just gonna like you know get away from all this I'm gonna be like the uh, like like the one kid who knows how to study so I can get the best grades like I compared to all these other like um hicks who live out there. And um, be be done with it. Well, well, H- well, Hachiken, um, like that's that maybe what um, Hachiken has planned, like for like for his life at um, Az- like Azo Agricultural, Azo Ag. Um, well, the actual reality turns out to be like much more um, complex than he than he expected. I mean, like while he's definitely got the edge on. On all the other students, in terms of like you know, like all around studying um, acumen, well, it's like he does not know anything about actual uh, actual farming. It's like the actual um, like uh, layout of the uh, it's like of the high school to the point where he gets lost there trying to chase chase down a uh, stray calf on the fir- first day. Like oh, and when um like and and during PE when they're asked like hey you're gonna run the length of the uh, high school. Which is like you know, like a couple thousand kilometers and all, and like he realizes like you know, what the hell have I gotten myself into, and that's that's kind of like the thrust of of Silver Spoon because you know Hachiken, he's our he's our protagonist and our point of view character because he's a char- he's a guy who like who was burnt out on the uh, traditional Japanese um like stud- studying regimen, but um. But like the place he's decided to run to, like demands like a uh, like a whole new set of skills from him as well. So we can see him like like learn like the ropes of um like of basic farming. It's like of like and just be just be like um, brought up to speed on it, you know, what all these char- what like you know what a proper farmer is like you know. In fact, it's not just one thing. Like whether or not like hey you know like are you gonna be someone who like exercises in dairy? So like, you know, someone who specializes in raising, um, like uh, it's like um beef. 
It's like, are you exercising, raising like you know, vet, vegetables? It's like that kind of thing. Or it's like, hey, you mean like someone who like raises raises horses to race and whatnot. It's like the uh, the like, the appeal of um, Silver Spoon at first is just like that that whole like um, point of view aspect. I mean, okay, I mean maybe I mean like I not I, I think that not a lot of us are like you know like like I'm geared towards like you know farming type. Type, type activities and Silver Spoon like um leans into that because you know before he was going to be a mangaka um Hiromu Arakawa was going to be was enrolled in like a uh, agricultural school like um like um Azo Agricultural so so she's she kind of like um lev- like I'm um, leveraging a lot of the like a lot of her personal experience in telling in telling this series and um, there's a and but she brings a lot of the same energy that she brought to Fulmina Alchemist as well as the uh, like um over exaggerated slapstick that um that she traded in like with that series as well, you know just like from from seeing Hatchkin like because I mean one well Hatchkin's like you know willing to give this like uh this, give the school his best shot he's also kind of a giant shit magnet as far as you know what what's going to happen to him as far as you know, it's like he's like he's a guy who just can't say no to anyone so he's going to, he's going to help everyone out and um people. It's like, and he just wants to like you know do his best and um be like you know recognized for his for his effort. So it's like he's both like he both he's just trying to trying to like help everyone and um it's like it's like and offer his expertise to everyone. And just like it just drives drives him nuts for a good good long while. Like even when he um when he's um trying to uh, get in good with um with um with a with um Aki Mikage who um is the uh, one of the members of the uh, like the equestrian club, and um, like he joins it because like you know she asks them because like she thinks horses are so cool and she wants everyone to like join, like um join the club as well. But you know it's like but but um their relationship as things go on it's like it's it's cute in the sense that you know like well we all know that they're gonna be um you know like a couple by the end of the series, but um Arakawa at least plays like you know plays up their uh, like their relationship in the sense that you know everyone else knows this as well. Everyone else is kind of like you know why don't you just just get together before that? And there are excuses, but it's but overall it's like it's handled kind of it's like in a in a more self aware manner that's like makes it less annoying than it would be it's like otherwise. And there's also like plenty of other like interesting characters as as well. Such as um, like um, Yoshino, like um, the the che- like the cheese freak who eventually goes off to France. Um, Tamako, the uh, it's like the uh, um, bull, like the um, the big girl who um, who is uh, determined to uh, overthrow her parents um, in their um, ult- like ultra modern um, like uh, like um, far- farming operation. Beppu, the um, like the meat freak. Um, um, Tokiwa, the uh, it's like. Like the utter the utter dim bulb who um, Hachiken is trying to um, like um tutor turn to making like you know less of a dim bulb as the series goes on. Aikawa, the uh, like the veterinary sciences student who um is deathly um like afraid of blood, and um Kumaba who is who's kind of like the umbrella opposite to Hachiken, who challenges him on his reasons for coming coming here, but um is also like um. Like um, fo- like um, plays the main focus to one of the uh, the series, you know, like main dramatic arcs because, you know, Silver Spoon, you know, it's like it's not really a, uh, I guess the main problem with it is it's not a very well organized series as it is. I mean, it gives you like the uh, the main goal of um Hotchkin, you know, just trying to get through like uh, like high school, like even though like, he's like real fish out of water here. But um, it's just like I mean, he's more like a, less a vehicle to just show you just you know what high school life is for someone who isn't um, you know like well versed in the ag- agricultural sciences. And uh, even though he's got his own like skills in terms of like his, his academic um, like fo- focuses, but um, it's uh, but the, the series just kind of like really like thrives on the uh, chapter to chapter um, like character. Like character stuff, and the good news is like a, the characters are like you know really it's like generally really engaging and likable, but um, 
The problem is that there's not really any like you know specific like arcs or like storylines I can point to as, as far as being like you know this is like what Silver Spoon is all about. I mean, there are some really good ones, like to the point where like when um Hachikin like passes out in his like build up in his like effort to uh like uh contribute to like the first um Azoag culture festival and um he ends up taking taking on so much that he passes out and then um his dad um basically the same guy who basically chased him from like from his like from his life in Sapporo just like has to come and say like you know what the hell are you doing son so and his dad He's kind of a perfect antagonist for the series in the sense that, you know, it's like he's not he's not an evil guy, but he's ruthlessly pragmatic in the sense that, you know, he just looks at what what his son has done, just like points out, you know, okay, this is what you have. This is what is going wrong. This is what you are not doing right. And it's like and 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 on there are a lot of times when you realize that, okay, he's kind of got a point, but he's just really being a gigantic asshole about this and you know when ha- when Hachiken like you know passes out that first time that's the first time we get like a real like you know sense of like you know what this guy is like then then there's a the point where um, Kumaba's um, family just um like loses their farm and you realize that oh this holy crap like you know this um, farming stuff in Japan this there's actually like a real major downside to it this isn't as easy as it, as it seems and then um when uh, Hatchigan has to, um, you know, confront his confront his dad again about, you know, it's like it's about his like his um his his drive to what he, what he wants to do at like at Izoag, which is just like former company. It's like and his dad's like, well, what have you learned in this time? Like besides being just like you know fool foolhardy and re- and reckless, and like Hatchigan like shoots back and he's like, well, what like well, what what is this like you know. Are you saying that like after I've failed once, like you know, like am I just worth less than um, it's like, it's like then um, it's like then it's like then the uh, then livestock. So it's like, and that's that's kind of point when you realize that you know how Tachikin has kind of changed is that he actually like ha- does have a good like argument to throw back at his dad, and that he is kind of growing because the series kind of like lives like really lives by, you know like. Like that, Hachikin like, is a kind of a character who will change, who, who is like has so much stuff thrown at him, and like some of it's like, like as just you know, hey, it's like you know, your high school kid, you got to learn how to deal with this. Other times it's kind of like, oh, it's like yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna throw this at you because like you know, we just realize that you're just kind of a guy who just like can't say no, and you're just gonna like be, like 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 just be this giant chick mat chip magnet. And Hall. So it's so the series like gets by for a good long length on just you know this, this character driven approach. The problem I have with it at the very end, like now that we're at the end of it, now that we've reached like volume fifteen and this is this is like um Silver Spoon like as a whole. Well, I guess my biggest problem with it is is that um when we get to this this final this final volume, this final run, you know, it's like there is no like big like giant arc of completion and all. It's like we uh the final volume the final volume is definitely solid and all. It's like I mean it's like we uh we get to see Hachiken sit for the uh Oezo um like um university it's like like test in order to get his Foo handler's license and also to go to um to, like go to the college with um with um with um, Mika Mikage, and also um, like to like to uh, to, like to, like to get um like to get more insight into his like um business with um like grow, like growing pigs, and then we get a uh, fi- like the final couple of chapters which basically jump to the very end of his um his college life, and he um goes out to Russia to meet up with a friend who has um plans for like for the future and all. Well, I mean. Like, this is all fine and all. It's like, and I like the uh, last couple of pages when um, we learn that um, Hachiken has left a, a specific legacy, like at, um, it's like at um, Ezo Ag, which um, which is nice, which is which is cool and all. But as far as I just you know, having a series that just kind of like like builds to like a like a specific climax that, that you feel that like, oh well, this is the plan all along. Well, Silver Spoon is 
not that serious. And to the point, and to that point, though, know, there's there's actually some real life reasoning behind this in the sense that, like in its last couple um, years of serialization, it was really delayed um, to the point where um, you think that oh that um, that Kintaro Miura would look like look at this and go yeah you know it's not that bad, but um, but um, Arakawa apparently not only had some like personal family um, business to take care of, but I imagine she also had to deal with um, the ongoing serialization like requirements of of Arslan as well. But um, now, and I can't say that you know these series that these the things specifically contributed to um, like how how the ending to Silver Spoon turned out, but part of me feels that you know, you know maybe she that maybe she been left to like you know finish the series off like within a drama free environment, maybe things would have turned out different. You know, maybe things would have been like like, you know, have have had thud toward a more like cohesive, um like um dramatically workable um finale. Like as it is, it's like I think that um that the uh, finale of Silver Spoon it's like like um wrap, wraps up quite well. It's like I, I mean it's like it's I don't regret um, like buying this at all it's like and overall it's like I mean, it's like it's it's a high school series but it's also a high school series that focuses on like like an, an area of study that like but a lot of us probably won't have any um that that a lot of us won't either won't have any reference for or will actually may actually see themselves in completely in the sense that you know hey i mean like either people either haven't gone to an agricultural high school or you have so you know the it's so it's kind of like uh in, interesting in that regard it's said you know hey like i think that you know people it'd be interesting to find out what people who have um gone to like this agricultural like high school except would think of this series but overall it's like i think that, you know there's a lot that being told from the point of an out point of view of an outsider it's like i think it's a, a it's a good setup in that it's like in that regard and overall it's like I did really enjoy it. It's like I, I enjoyed reading this, rereading this series again. Like even though it's like, you know, maybe it doesn't like, like uh, give us like this grand climax that you know, I was hoping for. But um, overall, it's like it was good fun. It's like, and I think that, um, you know, it's like, it's it's for it's further proof of um, it's like of Arakawa's talent because you know after um, Full Metal Alchemist. And Silver Spoon and Arslan, it's like she is definitely someone um, who it's like who I will wa- will want to follow, like, you know, whatever she does next. You know, it's like um, I think she's committed to Arslan, like you know, for the for the time being. But you know, if you if you looked at Silver Spoon, you thought, wow, it's like you know, this is on the creator of Full Alchemist, but it's like a series about a agricultural high school. I don't know about this, man. No, no, I'm telling you, go for it. It's like it's really good. It's like and it like does a great job of like you know bringing you into that that whole like like that whole mindset. Like, even if like you know you're like Hachikin and you think that hey you know it's like I'm not sure if I wanted to go to this kind of school in the first place. I'm gonna try and make it work. I think Silver Spoon works works in that regard. It's like you know not definitely not the greatest series ever. But definitely like thoroughly enjoyable like as far as its you know agricultural high school um, aims go. So, um, John, uh, any thoughts on your your end about any of this? Well, as long as the story is told really well, I, I, it can take any setting. But and it's certainly not um, it's not unique that uh, you know that different mangakas decide to just write about a totally you know something that might make them you know go from alchemy to agricultural you know like an agricultural school you know maybe that's what she wanted to do so hey you know why not if you tell the story well then it's worth it's worth reading yeah it's like i think this the series is definitely a much more character driven than it is plot driven and i think that the uh the appeal of the characters um carries it through just you know it's like the fact that you know, hey, it's like you're you're not reading this for like the it's great plot twists. You're reading this for it's like it's uh, character, it's like it's character twists, and you know how they uh, evolve as the series goes on, especially Hatchigan. Exactly, exactly. All right, you know what you're going to talk about next time. 
Okay, unless something goes completely wrong, I'm going to be um, catching up with the current state of X-Men, hopefully with Rob. It's like, hopefully I, I, I'll actually, I, you'll make the effort to like, talk to him and like, get him involved in this next one. I'm sure I will, but, you know, it's like, that's, but that, that's where things are for right now. All right, and we'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right, laters. Bye.